Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, the go-to resource for womenpreneurs like you who want to grow your blog, build your business, and make bank online. So I'm Andrea Boulder, and in today's video, I want to share with you how to host a live online workshop or training with Zoom. So Zoom is one of my go-to resources. I use it just about every single week to host my weekly Womenpreneur Q&A sessions for the students inside of my membership site, Womenpreneur University. And I also use it for my online workshops and live trainings and business coaching. And I even use it sometimes to record my online courses. And you can use it to conduct uh, just about everything, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, one-on-one -on -one business meetings with clients. You can use it for mastermind sessions and you can even host online parties. So it is a really useful tool that anybody can use. And what I love about Zoom is that it's free. It is free. It is budget friendly and it is a tool that is really super to use and to navigate. So Zoom as a has a few different options in addition to their free option. So there's a free option and then they do have paid options that you can kind of level up or choose from based on your needs and what you need in terms of um, capacity and, and volume. So you can see the different pricing plans here and you can see that with the free plan, you can host up to 100 participants and host an unlimited amount of meetings. But there's one drawback back to the free plan is that the meetings on the free plan are limited to 40 minutes. So every 40 minutes is going to cut off and then you'll either have to kind of re-invite your, your guests. So that kind of gets a little bit annoying. So it is worth if you're going to be doing extended meetings or webinars or mastermind sessions to just upgrade to the um, larger plan. So you can just take a look at the options and see which one is right for you. And you can go to zoom.us and you can click sign up super easy and then just follow the instructions to activate your account. So once you have your account um, set up and activated, you're going to open up Zoom and you're just going to follow the setup instructions that they give you in the setup wizard. So they're going to take you through a series of prompts that will help you to get set up pretty quickly. And during the setup process, like I said, you'll be prompted to download the Zoom installation app to your computer, or if you're on an iPhone or have a mobile phone, then you can download the app from the app store. And then you'll be able to um, launch your Zoom meetings. And since I already have Zoom set up, I'm not going to go go through all of the setup steps necessarily. But once your account is set up, you can then log in and then you'll be inside of your account dashboard, which looks like this. So let's go through some of these settings so we can familiarize um, ourselves with the actual Zoom dashboard. So on the left hand side of your dashboard, you are going to see your personal profile. This is where all your account information is. And then you're going to see meetings, webinars, recordings, and settings. So you're going to want to go through each one of these tabs just to make sure that you have things set up in a way that is going to um, allow you to navigate Zoom in the way that you want it and use it in the way that you want it so that you can get the best performance out of your Zoom meetings and your Zoom meeting rooms. You'll also see um, under the admin section, you'll see user management, room management, account management, and then advanced. So just to give you an example, under the meeting section, this is going to give you a list of all of your upcoming meetings, any previous meetings that you've had, and it is also going to um, give you information on your personal meeting room. So this is this will allow you to check out your meeting ID, your password, um, if you have a meeting password that you use. Um, for people to join, you have an invitation link, and then you have settings where kind of default settings where you can choose um, what your video settings are going to be. 
your audio settings and any meeting options. So you can go through these and see if you want to allow people to join the meeting room before you actually show up to host the meeting. You can um, mute participants upon entry. You can enable what's called a waiting room where you have to actually um, manually invite or give people access to the um, to the meeting. You can also choose to have the option to um, add people who are only authenticated users. Okay, so that eliminates all of the uh, spam and the Zoom bombs that a lot of people have been experiencing and you can have a tighter control on your security. And then you can also have the option to record your meeting automatically. So once you actually launch your Zoom meeting, Zoom is going to automatically record that meeting for you so you don't have to uh, remember to do it. So these are all options that you can um, set as a default when you start your meetings and it will give you an easy way to just kind of do it all at once and um, make sure that those things are taken care of to your preference. So you can also come into, if you're doing webinars, there's a webinar um, tab. There's recordings where you can search your recordings. I always save my recordings directly to my desktop so I don't have anything in the cloud. And this will just give you a way to search your cloud recordings and your local recordings. Okay. You can also go through your settings and this is where you can, um, again, activate different features that will allow you to kind of customize your Zoom experience. You can also go through um, the admin, user management. If you have more than one user, you can designate roles to each one of those users. Zoom also has um, video tutorials and a knowledge base. So if you get stuck at any point or not sure what to do or what a feature means, then you can go through that and um, make sure that you are educated on those features. So moving on, on the right hand side, if you want to um, schedule a meeting for a later date, you can click schedule a meeting. And you can give your scheduled meeting a name, a description. You can um, designate on the calendar when that meeting will occur. So date and a time, the duration. So if you want to change it for um, an hour and a half versus, you know, an hour, which is the default, then you can go in and change it. Or if it's going to be longer, like an all day event, then you can go in and, you know, put in seven hours. So you can just go ahead and change that to how you want it. And it doesn't mean necessarily that the Zoom meeting is going to cut off after you've ex um, gone past that time. It just gives people an idea of how long your meeting is going to um, last, expected to last. You can choose your time zone and you can also choose if this is going to be a recurring meeting. So if it's going to be a recurring meeting, you can come in and put if it's going to be daily, weekly, monthly, or no fixed time. And it's going to repeat every, you know, so often every month, every 15 days, um, every four days, etc. So you can come in and schedule recurring meetings as well. You can also have your guests register if you want them to be required to register before you actually um, have them join your meeting. You can generate a new meeting ID for each meeting that you launch or you can simply use your personal meeting ID, which is kind of like a universal meeting ID that's specific to you and your meeting room. You can also require that there is a password for them to join if you wanna do that. That's another security feature um, update that they've put in. And like I said before, you can go through the video, audio, and the meeting options as well for each meeting that you want to schedule. If you have alternative hosts, if you're on a plan that allows you to have multiple hosts, then you can put their emails in here as well. And the email that they log into will register and then they'll be able to actually be activated as a host. So that is for scheduling a meeting. Now, if you want to join a meeting, then you would need obviously a meeting ID or a personal link name. And then you can go ahead and join any 
um, meeting that has been scheduled or set up. And if you want to host a meeting immediately, like right now, you can go ahead and click on host a meeting and you can choose if you want to do it with your video on, with your video off, or if you want to do screen share only where you're just um, showing your screen. So if you have a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation and you just want to show your screen, or if you are doing a demonstration and you want to be able to show your screen, you can do screen share only. So I am going to launch a meeting so that you can see the features. And once you start a meeting, it is going to ask you how you want to join. So we're going to click with video on. And it's going to launch. And it's going to let us know that we're using our computer audio. Okay, so let's go through some of these features. So you can choose to um, mute yourself or unmute yourself. Obviously, if you are giving a presentation and you're the host, you want to make sure that you are unmuted. You can click the um, navigation tab here and you can check and see what microphone that you have. You can select a speaker. You can test your speaker and microphone, which I highly suggest that you do before you host or launch your meeting just to make sure that it is working. You can switch to phone audio or leave computer audio. So they, these are all the settings that you have available to you. And if you're using, say, an external microphone, like a blue yeti then you can and that's plugged in it will actually show up here and then you can toggle between which one you want to actually use so i'm using my built-in internal microphone that i have on my mac but if you have other um, microphones that are hooked up to your computer they're going to show up here you can choose to record your video or stop your video here using stop video and you can select your camera. So if you are using, again, an external camera like a Logitech or a webcam and you have it hooked up, it'll show here. And then you can choose which camera you want to actually be um, capturing your, your meeting. Okay, so these are the video settings. You have security options. You can lock your meeting where once you start, you can lock it so nobody else, even if they registered or anything like that, can actually get in. The meeting is locked. And you can enable, right now I have it where it's enabled um, with the waiting room, and that will prompt me if someone pops in to the meeting and I have to manually give them access, okay? So that is, they'll be in a holding room or in a queue, and then once they um, are entered, they're into the meeting. You can allow participants to share their screen. You can do chat. You can allow them to rename themselves and you can allow them to unmute themselves. So if you want to make sure that you have complete control over your meeting and you don't want any background noise, then you want to make sure that you uncheck that so people don't have the option to unmute themselves. OK, so. The participants are right here. If you click on that, you'll be able to see who is actually in the meeting. It has my name here because I'm the only one in the meeting right now and I'm the host. And you can also um, choose the options here on the side, whether you want to mute them or allow them to share a screen. This is the chat. So if people have questions, you can actually um, see those questions there. If you want to say hi or have everybody say hi, you can type in or if you want to communicate something during um, your presentations like add a link or um, give people instructions, then you can type those here in the chat as well. And you can also invite people to join the meeting by clicking this invite button. You can do a bulk mute all and then there's more options again where you can mute participants upon entry so people are not interrupting your um, presentation or interrupting you while you are um, talking. And you have all of these other options as well to lock the, mute the meeting, enable waiting room. So some of the other options that we saw at the bottom here on our um, 
information bar. So if you wanted to come in and record, this is probably one of the first things that you should do. If you do not have it set up where it is going to automatically record your screen, then you would obviously come in here, you would click record and you can record to the cloud or record on this computer. And you can choose your options there. And they have something new, which is called reactions. So it's like only two emojis here, <laughs> but if you want to, you know, do a pause or if you want to do a thumbs up, then you have the option for reactions there. So hopefully they'll add some more reactions. So those are kind of different, but if you want to share your screen, so this is important. You are going to click um, screen share. And then what you're going to see is a number of different options. You have your desktop. You have the option for a whiteboard. Um, if you have an iPhone or iPad that you want to connect via, via AirPlay, you can click that. Or if you have it connected to um, your computer through a cable, you can click that and it'll show what's on your, your phone or your mobile device. And then depending on how many other tabs you have up, they're going to show in here as well. So these are the options for the basic screen share. And you want to make sure that you're sharing your computer sound and optimize screen share for video clips. If you go to advanced, you can um, share a portion of your screen here. Okay, so it shares a portion of your screen by using a resizable rectangular window. And you can also um, have the option to do music or computer sound only or content from a second camera. You can pull that in. And then if you have files that you want to share with your audience while you're on, because this is all about, I use um, Zoom a lot for e-learning and for online workshops. So a lot of times I'll have a PDF or a downloadable worksheet or workbook that I want to share with my audience. And you can actually pull the files in from um, Dropbox, from Google Drive, from Microsoft um, Drive, or from Box. Okay, so these will give you the options to pull that in um, directly during the Zoom. So if we go back to basic and we hit desktop and we click share, then what it's going to do, it's going to share our screen. Okay. And you'll see that everything within this green outline is within the green outline is actually going to be sharing or what is going to be captured. And at the bottom, you have this navigation bar where it'll let you know in green that you are sharing your screen. And then if you want to stop sharing your screen, you can hit the red stop share. OK, and you can control. Um, the audio, the video, um, participants, you can annotate if you wanted to. You can pause the share. You can open up a new share. Or if you hit more, then you have access to, you can open up your chat so that you can see that. And if you're recording and you um, have your chat open, your chat is not actually going to be picked up in the recording. So when you download your video, it is not going to have this chat or Zoom box um, obstructing your screen. OK, so these are all options on how to do a Zoom. And let's go to end. When you're done, you're going to go end and you're going to click end meeting for all leave meeting. And if we were recording, let me just do this real quick. So let's say that we're recording on our um, computer. Your microphone is not working properly. OK. Um, continue recording. It'll let you know meeting audio may not be fully recorded because we're just now um, doing this and I'm actually recording from Camtasia. So my microphone is actually being used by another app. So when we end and end meeting for all, it's going to let me know that the recorded files will need to be converted to an MP4 and it's going to convert my files. And then I can go in and choose where I want to save those files. So I'm just going to hit save and then you can see the meeting file right here. And it also puts you, um, gives you an audio only, which is pretty cool. And then it gives you the video in, the, in an MP4. Okay, so that is pretty cool.
So let's go ahead and close that. So there you go, how to host an online meeting or workshop with Zoom. It is super simple. And as always, I hope that this video was helpful, that it's useful, that it's a tool that you can consider in building your online business. And if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe so that you can get notified when I post new videos and make sure that you are sharing this video with someone who it might help. So here's to leveling up and killing it online. I'll see you on the next video.